But welcome again. So we're very excited to take you through some really wonderful things today. Uh, we have a lot uh, to get through. Again, remember that today uh, is about two different ways of participating. You can check out the link there that's in the chat or here up on the page. And please uh, feel free to uh, grab those assets as we go along because you can either follow along and actually build some stuff out and have some work product by the end or you can just follow along uh, with your eyeballs and check it out and sit back, relax, and, and enjoy the, the presentation. We're gonna try to keep it fun and poppy. Again, uh, man, the myth, the legend, Josh Barton, I'll let him uh, give a little introduction and we're gonna kick it off and get going, so. Hey all, thanks all for having us and taking time out of your Friday to just talk about Litmus and what you can do in the, with the content author tool. I'm just an instructional designer, multiple, I don't know officially what I do. I do everything here at everything, Litmus, Josh. <laughs> everything. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, my main my main role is to uh, take care of our customer training, which is what we're doing right now. Uh, so we're training you, our customers, on this awesome new tool. And Most I'm important. really excited. Definitely. Before we go further, um, let's progress on to the new next slide. Uh, you're going to have to do one thing in the system if you haven't already. We sent out an email yesterday as an update to just kind of give you forewarning on this. But if you haven't done this yet, you're going to have to make sure that you are promoted to content author within your Litmus instance. That's the number one thing you have to do uh, to make sure that this module is uh, visible and you can use it on your end as an admin. Um, so to do that, you have to switch to admin view. Um, and then click in account settings and then go to your litmus features and click into that content author tile. It should just be right alphabetically ordered now. So it should just be right there. And then make sure that that box is clicked. And if it's not clicked, you have to click it, save. It might refresh the page and you might have to go back into it. And then once that's enabled though, you can hit click promote to content author and then select all users um, that you want to be able to use this tool, including yourself, obviously. Um, so like Mike said in the beginning, uh, if you want to follow along, you can totally follow along. This will definitely be recorded and available later. So if you just want to just tune in now just to see what we have to offer, go for it. Um, no no shame in that at all. Yeah, uh, at your own right. pace. Here. Definitely. Ideally, at the end of this, we'll have uh, kind of a light course to introduce your learners to Litmus. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, and we'll be using a lot of the modules within the content author to make that happen. Um, so really quickly, I know everybody's still downloading that link. Uh, some people are saying that they're having some audio problems, just wanna make sure that everything's all good. Um, people are saying that they've got the content. So I just wanna make sure that you all download that right there. It's a zip file and you should be able to click download in the top uh, top corner um, of, that, of the screen once you open that link. Nice. And Nicole, you're welcome, by the way, for putting, that was my idea. Actually, No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> putting all the stuff in alphabetical order. That's good. But just remember, again, big picture here. We're really looking at that uh, that authoring tool. We're going to show you how it works. We're going to walk through it here. We're excited to, to show you the power of this thing. But also remember that even just that teachable moment, I think there are some some folks that we've talked to that are like, I don't even know how to how to set somebody up as an author, right? So that that was actually a really good teachable moment right there of the that you need to enable it first. You need to set somebody up or multiple people up to have that access to be able to go in and make that happen. So then Definitely. they'll be able to see everything they need to use the power of the tool. The power of the content author tool. That's and right. if you do get a 404 error on that link, we've we've tested it, trust me, it works. Uh, it, it is case sensitive. So that might be something you have has to be spelled perfectly with the correct concept. Yeah. The CA. There's a link in the chat too. Um, maybe we could put that same link. Uh, well, I guess you can't click it in the in the yeah. questions one, but. I don't, um, I don't think that the guests can see the chat because. Oh, uh, it's kind just of, us? That's yeah. Not, quite, not a really great chat if it's just private between. <laughs> okay, anyway, the chat is let's essentially move on. <laughs> Try to write really? it exactly how it is there and we should be good. Okay. Definitely, definitely. Thank you. Yeah, sure. So real quickly, before we get into that, I just want to make sure that everybody, we talked about a few points. What does good training content look like? Ooh, um, good. It needs to be simple, right? It needs to be just clear. Um, don't need to overcomplicate things. Your goal is to teach somebody something instead of confuse them, right? Just keep that in mind whenever you're creating content in Litmus and in anything. 
It also needs to be organized. Uh, you need to be able to kind of contain your content and put it in its own little boxes to make it easily digestible, uh, scrollable, consumable by the learner. Also needs to be pretty and beautiful. Uh, yes. Right? Uh, as a designer, I like to say that I, I make things pretty. Uh, it's kind of like my main shtick. Um, and when you're creating content, you need to make sure that it's aesthetically appealing uh, because if, you come, if you're coming out of the gates with some uh, 1995 word clip art, you know, and the little, little pixelated graphics, that's just going to make your learners drop off immediately and not pay attention because it feels like you did not give any effort to make the content look good. So why should I give effort to invest my time in this, right? It's a very, it's a question learners ask themselves all the time. I, as, as a designer, I also find myself asking that a lot of times too. Maybe I'm extra critical on that end. And then interactive, content needs to be interactive. Um, and that means being able to give you feedback, if you get a question right. Um, it also needs to be able to, you have to have like buttons to click and, go through, yeah, it can, shouldn't just be all straight, just text and pictures. Um, so that's what content looks like. And a quick preview, um, just to make sure that we cover all of the modules before we even get into the tool. These are the components that are offered in the uh, Litmus content author module. Um, you have storytellers, organizers, media and assessments, very closely tied to that last slide. Uh, you know, we got want to make sure it's organized. Um, storytellers, this is just simply texts and declarations, and then we've got these different assessments. And the cool thing about this content author module, if I haven't mentioned already, uh, I think we mentioned the last call that we were on about this. Uh, we're constantly building onto this. Uh, you can mm -hmm. see these little two lines right here. That's my quick edit in PowerPoint, or PowerPoint right there. Uh, we actually added two new um, items for the assessments in this last release. Uh, so we're always adding things onto this. Um, in, in addition to that, we're also enhancing the features and settings within it, um, which we'll get into. Um, so without further ado, just want hey, to make Josh, sure. Real quick, let me yeah. just. Just pulling back from the last slide too, yeah. just understand as we talk about things being simple and being beautiful and novel, I mean, we know these things, right? A lot of us are instructional designers on on the call probably that, that mm -hmm. think about, okay, these are all the duh, the duh moments. So, you know, like, yeah, yeah, there has to be these things. Well, we're trying to, we're really trying to make the case too that the tool that we've built into your uh, instance, right? That's built into Litmus is going to be able to help you do these things without having to be a Josh Barton, right? Who can, who has all of this training in instructional design and can use Photoshop, which still eludes me today, right? So those types of things so that you can do this type of thing and be able to hit all of these marks without having to be some uh, graphical professional, uh, graphical professional. Definitely. That's a term. But anyway, I just want to bring it all together, right? Why are we starting with this? Because we know these are the be the bedrock things, um, and but we want to be able to create a tool where people who aren't um, super highly skilled in doing some of these things can 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 do those things easily. So that's where Absolutely. we're at. Moving on. Thanks, Josh. Yeah, definitely. Let's get right into it. Um, so just going to that download link and opening up that folder, sorry, you see all my, my windows popping up, you'll see a file that says follow along directions um, included. It's just a text file right here. Oops, let me undo that. Um, and it's got just a set series of numbered steps right here. Um, if you do click into here and click enter, it will throw the numbers off. <laughs> so don't <laughs> edit this. <laughs> that was really annoying for me as I was creating this. I had to redo this a few times. Um, but we're just going to follow along these steps and we'll create our first course. Um, so just to make sure there's no better way, right, Josh, than to do it, uh, to learn it, right? It's just to jump in and, but again, watch or, or play along. Totally up to you. Definitely. Definitely. And just to make sure we're all in the right place. So if you're in the learner view, you want to get to your admin view, um, you go admin view and then to get to. Again, to get to the content authoring settings, this is where you go account settings, let miss features, right down to content author. And as we explained in kind of the beginning, you need to make sure that you have an account admin access to do this and promote yourself to content author or have somebody else do this for you. And this is where you click and, you know, find your name. So now that I have myself promoted as content author, I'm actually going to go to the content tab right here and I am going to just create a new course. Now we can actually create this content mo author module directly just by creating a module right here and, and clicking this button. 
but we're actually going to create the shell of the course um, because we want to make this something that your learners, you know, you can set up for your learners. Um, so create a course. And then so we're going to go with learner welcome course. And I'm just going to copy and paste the course title and the course description from the document. And then we will upload this image. And you know what? I might have not included this welcome course tile in the zip file. That might be the one thing I didn't include. Um, so right now, it's just going to have no image for you. Um, but that's OK. And we have a basically an, a shell course for you. Learner welcome course. This is something that you can edit it and essentially, you know, change it to your company's name um, and make it customized to your, whatever you call your litmus training portal. Um, that's also kind of why we, I'm not worried too much about this, this image here, because uh, while we do mention litmus, this course is something that uh, ideally you should kind of edit and brand for yourself. And we'll talk about how you can do that in the module. Without further ado, let's add this content author module by clicking the create tab and clicking into content author module. So quick note on that too, if you go back yeah. real quick, uh, on yeah. that content module, you're only gonna see that when you've enabled it, right? So some folks are like, I can't see the uh, the button to click on that or have that little tab. It's, it's Again, we have it has to be enabled in the uh, admin before and then you'll see that. Just, just double check, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. All right. So. I just created uh, a content author module and I clicked uh, save an author. Um, you can title it anything you want. Uh, I just said, let's go, right? Um, and this is where we will uh, just talk real quickly about the navigation within the uh, content author module. So right here, it lands you immediately on your pages. This is arguably the most important part of this module. This is where you can add the majority of your content. But before all of that, you can actually give your learners a little bit of an intro right here with a nice uh, banner image with some text on it if you want. Um, in addition to that, you can have resources that are within the content module. And these are separate from course resources, which you can do on, on the course side. These are actually within the SCORM file that you build. So you'll have there'll be a tab in this that you can download. And the resources right now um, can either be a direct URL or you list URL and give it a title, or you can upload a document, um, and it can be a PDF, Word doc, Excel, PowerPoint, text for text file. And I believe that um, with every release, they're, they're working on expanding these and uh -huh. making sure that they're stable for release. Um, so there'll be more documents that you can add there in the future. Beyond that, some big things I want you to do is um, look at your theme tab right here and upload your logo right here. Um, I'm just going to just upload this logo Lenny icon right here. Uh, let's go back to my folder. Lenny icon somewhere in here. You know, what? I let's just go to my logos folder. I might just have that to do that. You so can I'm really upload my logo. And, yeah, yeah. And exactly. You should upload your, your company logo right there. I just I just wanted to show you guys that you should and could upload your logo. You could also switch your uh, your whole course to dark mode right here, which oh, will like the colors. Yeah, right? It looks really, uh, really smooth. And you'll actually notice different. a difference. Yeah, totally. And and especially if your instance is in dark mode, um, you you want to keep that uh, cohesiveness. Like my the Litmus Dojo instance is all customized to be dark and looks like Ninja Dojo. That these This is actually the, the style that I would go with with courses on the Litmus Dojo. But it all depends on you know what you want. And you can also change the text on accent colors and that things and also you know change your fonts. Uh, beyond that, you have uh, some simple settings here. Uh, you can set the language of all the modules to all of these languages that Litmus supports. And obviously, that doesn't translate the content to Vietnamese, but it will take <laughs> all of the UI and make it Vietnamese if, if you wanted to do that. Um, I'm going to not do that right now, though, because that would just be funny if I just totally lock myself out and get confused on how to go back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So starting with the introduction, we're going to upload this image, which says welcome course tile. So this this one should be in your content author. <laughs> assets. 
Um, Look in that, yeah, in that folder, you should be able to go into that, the, the, the assets and be able to, um, to pick one out. But I, what I love about this so much, just as you go along, Josh, here, is just the paint mm -hmm. by numbers approach, right? It really is like click here, add this, click here, add this. And there aren't a ton of choices, right? Like uh, those of you who have used something like Storyline or one of the, the builders where you can change every single pixel. To me, I've been doing instructional design for 20 years now. And I tell you what, when I use something like this, it, whatever makes it faster for me to be able to get to speed uh, and get stuff out to value uh, and make sure that it still looks great, right? That it's still interesting and, and, and it's, it's clean and it's responsive. That's really what I'm looking for. So I produce everything now in programs like these that are just simple because again, it's a nice format. People seem to like it a lot and you can still do a lot with it, which we'll show you here as we keep going. Definitely. Just a quick plug for why, you know, even myself when I'm creating content, Josh too, that we're using these types of tools just because it takes so much of the work out um, and, and it makes it easy for everybody. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, right here, we'll just, let's just delete this uh, module title and you'll see why this module title, when you preview it for the learner, it actually overlays on this image. And for this image, we're using just an animated GIF right here. Um, so you don't want to have with text, so you don't want to text over text, right? Um, so we'll just delete that for now, and we'll swap this uh, module introduction with this text right here. So just do a nice little copy paste. And yeah, just a quick uh, teachable moment. That that welcome yeah. is an animated GIF, as Josh said. I know we had a few questions, or at least one in the chat mm -hmm. there in the, in the question. Um, this is one of those hacks that I think is great because you can bring in animated GIFs of things that maybe you build a process. Like think about this as a structural thing. If you're showing people where to click in a in a piece of software or something, you could animate that GIF and it would show the whole thing, and then you could drop it in and have it be like a little video that loops. You know, it'd be basically that little thing would loop and show them exactly what to do. And and underneath it, you create the content of like, as you see above, that, 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 right? So it's fun because you can add those types of things in that just kick it up a, a notch, right? It's not just a flat static type thing. So think about that as you go along. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we'll be able to preview this as soon as we add some page content. And you'll see what that looks like um, when it's in preview mode. Um, so the next step is to go to pages and click add page. And you'll see a bunch of different templates here. We're just going to with the basic template. And you can even enter a title in here now. Um, I saved it. Uh, I, I wrote down, welcome to the learner dashboard. Welcome to the learner dashboard. I feel like that's loud on my mic when I'm typing. So I'll, I'll try to do more copy and pasting instead of actually typing. Welcome to the learner <laughs> dashboard. And then now I can click edit page that I've kind of created this, right? Here we go. So you can see right here, it starts you off with a nice little cover image, some text with heading which is great for a template, but you know what? You can actually, if you want to, you just delete that, right? And you can kind of start from scratch. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna actually insert just a simple heading on its own that says, uh, this Josh, is what the learn the, dashboard looks like. Can you do me a favor, yeah. Josh? Click the insert button again. I just wanna showcase that. Of course. But notice, yeah. yeah, just to slow it down for a second. Like, look at all the oh, different yeah. things that you can put in there, right? Like, he's he's jumping through. He's so excited. I get it. Uh, but there are a lot of different <laughs> choices that you can put in there. So as we talk about it, I think the easiest way to explain it is that paint by numbers, right? Like, it's just, hey, this is a one is blue and this is red. And <laughs> you just kind of walk yourself through it all Bob Ross style. So um, absolutely. Ross, right? Yeah. So you can definitely use and check this out. So we're we have a way that we're going through it to teach you today. But uh, of course, you can put anything you want and play with that in there. Definitely, definitely. For our example, we're just going to put a simple headline text. And Perfect. each one of these things has different configurations, right? You can see you can center the text. You can choose um, headline style one through six, um, one being the biggest. And you actually can change the color of the text too to anything you need, uh, which is great. Um, we'll, we'll just copy this text in here. Uh, this is what your learner dashboard looks like, right? And you might see that this text kind of flows off of this little area. When it's in preview mode, it will wrap. Um, for uh, edu uh, for edu educational purposes, we'll do this by clicking the little medium size layout to just expand it, and that will prevent that wrapping from happening, which is, uh, I think, would, would look better. And now we we'll just need to insert an image of the learner dashboard. Um, so clicking that insert button again and clicking picture. We can now and now present hey, us with this like little that. nice beach image, right? Oh, doesn't that look great? It looks, looks like fantastic. Sunny, I want to be there. Anybody else? Show of hands. Okay, I see a few. Right. I see it too. So to click 
uh, to change this image, simply hit change image. And this is where, um, if you uploaded images to your course already, they'll all they'll all be here. So you, if you've uploaded something before that you want to reuse, just click it here instead of having to re-upload. It's a really powerful tool, almost like a WordPress sort of configuration. Yep. Um, and then, so this one is learner dash diagram. And you can see that this is an image with a screenshot. And in that screenshot, I just, in Photoshop, or I think I might've even done this in Power, you could do this in PowerPoint. Um, I just added this little text note here um, because you could add this image, a text module and another image. But for purposes, I just, I just wanna show that you guys can also upload images with text on them too. I mean. Real, really, the creativity is up to you and what you put here um, and yeah. how you display your content. If you do just a little work before, right? Like he was saying, you know, you could you can build out these animated gifs or these beautiful looking uh, tiles or images like what you see here, and they tell a story as well. And it's all together rather than creating different modules or or you know um, sections within this this module. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I mean, this is just these are the ways that we make it uh, do a little more than maybe it it can. But again, I think. The more something can do, the more chance you have of breaking it or doing it wrong. So I honestly, right, if I'm changing colors and sizes and all this, sometimes I make it look way worse than if it was just, hey, you can do it these three ways. It's like, okay, that makes sense to me. And then I can do that and move on. So I don't see it as a, as a super negative, but um, I mean, for some of you out there, you're really good at this and can do all this stuff in your sleep. For some like me though, I just pass it to Josh because like I don't, but but I can use a tool like this and actually be dangerous. Totally, totally. Really, yeah, anybody can be dangerous if, if they spend the time in here just playing around. Honestly, this for me, it was a really, I mean, we had our documentation from our support that talked about how to use these modules, but really I, I learned how to do this just literally by clicking into every single one of the modules and just messing around and trying to create something that looks uh, good. So I, that's the best yeah. way that, that I can learn, I think. Um, you'll see that. Uh, added that in image in there. And I also changed the layout to full width this time. And take note too, you can also add alt text, which is, um, so if the image does not load for whatever reason, there'll be text as a placeholder. And also this is something for um, accessibility and readers where um, somebody who's vision impaired will have a placeholder here uh, in, for yeah, in, in set of the image. So uh, it'd be good to add some helpful uh, language right there as well. So after we insert the picture right here, um, below this, we'll just add a little bit of a text uh, box, right? And this is just gonna be text speaking to the above image. And this is just a good flow uh, to go through with um, any sort of course, images, text, speaking to the UI or speaking to whatever is on screen. Um, there, like I said in the beginning, there's gonna be a lot of updates coming to the platform itself. And we're actually working with the people, I'm, I'm working specifically with um, the person who's in charge of all this. And one of my requests is to have multiple columns. Uh, so we can have like text and image and text. So that is something that's coming. I don't know which release side is gonna make side, it. Right? Exactly, side by side. And also clickable images too, where you can kind of click into them and you get like diagrams that pops up. I know that's a little bit farther along, but that multiple column things on the way for sure. Um, so yeah, that's inserting text. And then this is a real cool thing we'll do next is actually adding a new section. Now, what's the difference between inserting more content and adding a new section? The section, you can actually click into this background area. And if you didn't notice, you can actually click into this area too. And you'll, there, we were in a section all along, we just didn't know it. Um, section is what holds all of the inner components together. And the sections can have their own settings for background and padding, essentially. And that basically helps you divide up your training pretty well. Um, so let's do, for your background, you can do color, gradient, or image. Let's just show you what the gradient does. Um, clicking to that, very vi vibrant. Um, I'm gonna have some text on there, so I want it to be kind of light. So I'm just gonna drag these sliders around, but you can literally make it any color that you want. Um, and I, now, that, now that doesn't look good. Let's, let's just go back to there. Okay. I like the gradient, that's cool. 
right? It just looks, it looks just a little... Just a little bit. See, it's just the tiniest... I mean, you think about it, the way I explain it best is it's it's like making a meal, right? And making a stew or making a dish and leaving out all the spices and the salt and all of that. Sure, you get... like If you think about it, the meat, the potatoes, all of that are these things, the, the, the things you want them to learn. That's really important. But to make it really palatable, you throw in a little paprika, a little salt, a little pepper, a little... All of a sudden, bam! You've got... You know, people are, are talking about it and they're going, yeah, this I want that again, right? Sometimes we just serve up the main course, just like here's the stuff, and it's bland, and it's like, uh, and that's what our learners are doing. They're tasting, and they're going, "This is sustenance. It, it, it fills me up. I get it. I, I just, I'm not super pumped about it, right? I'm really excited. Right. That's when we add these little tiny little things in there. All of this stuff I call are the spices in our instructional design uh, as we're doing this here, and I think it adds a lot. I really do. My oh, personal yeah. bias. Oh yeah. Uh, and just continue on here. Um, we'll just add in some headings right here. Um, here are a few things you can do and let me see. Now this is just, uh, I don't want that background to be copy paste and then see. There we go. Uh, and uh, let's insert the image icon runners. So this is just another way of really paying attention on like, the visuals and adding beauty to your training. You don't necessarily need to add an image here for things that you can do in Litmus, but we want to make sure that you know, we're putting our best foot forward and giving our people something visually interesting. Um, so if you can get something that speaks semi uh, abstractly to the learning content, um, adds a little flavor, you know, that's always good. Um, just notice like, hey, your education, somebody's getting launched off, started getting achievements, there's things on the calendar, you can find content, learn new ideas, subtle, subtle things you can just yeah. add in, right? And then- it's fantastic. Now we're going to talk about the organizational aspect. I mean, we kind of started talking about the organizational aspect with the different sections, um, but I think oh, we have to kind of take advantage of all of these items that we have. Um, the ones that we're going to show today are going to be the accordion and the gallery, and I'm actually Love going to put a gallery inside of the accordion. Wait, what? <laughs> Hold on a minute. Blowing if my you mind. wanted to, you could put a gallery inside of an accordion and put an accordion inside of that gallery. And then you're just, just like an right infinite. There. I don't know if you wanted to do that. To your thing. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not. That seems like we're complicated. Over over complification. I love right. that beat up word. I think that's what we do a lot of. I yeah, I make up words every day. <laughs> <laughs> Inserting the cording, you'll have you'll have these little item titles that are little placeholders, and you can actually click add items. So we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'll just add few more items here as placeholders I can count okay and then I'm just going to copy and paste these titles into here initially and then once we enter in these titles you'll see those little pencil icons on the right side and that will let us actually edit the content within that accordion tab um, actually I don't think it's technically a tab we have tabs as well you can do a horizontal tab navigation um, too, if you prefer that instead of an accordion. Um, you know, good basic e-learning things. You know, these are obviously well, well respected web practices using these accordions and, you know, putting your content in there. Um, what's cool about these accordions is as a learner progresses through this um, and reads through them, they, they have to click into the accordion for that, them to get a check mark and like read through the content for them to actually progress further. Um, so clicking into the first accordion item, item take assigned training. So this is what you, you can do. Um, let's do this, copy this text in here, and we're just going to add a new text component, right? And you'll see that blue J default text, replace that. And let's replace the, or let's insert in the picture a chord dash. Um, so anything in the accordion I just titled accord like honda um so you've seen a lot of those coming up the next few steps all right so this is essentially just uh putting some text in an image in the accordion and once you're done with that um you can hit done actually let's do one more text component so we can we can hit ah shoot undo we can hit insert and add a new text component but here let me show you a little little hack you can also hit duplicate right there and then 
just copy a text component if you don't want to do all that. Just it's like one second click quicker to do that. And these things make a difference when you're like creating a large piece of content and small yeah. things. And uh, also, and next to that duplication thing, you can see these there's these little arrows. I can actually de designate where these go, you know. And that's with every single one of these elements. You'll so have duplicate options and then arrows to kind of move it around on the page. No, you can't move stuff from one section to the other section, even if it's on the same page. Um, it doesn't, the arrows stop at the end of the section. So if you want to divide your stuff into sections later, don't do that. <laughs> just all I have to say. Uh, once you're done, just hit done editing for that accordion. And then I, I realize there's a bunch of accordions here. So we're going to kind of go through these kind of fast. Um, so for the content library, we'll just edit and add in this text right here. Um, and this is basically just speaking uh, to the content library and telling your learners all about, you know, what they can find in the content library. And again, this is a very light, light overview of Litmus. Uh, this is basically just telling your learners, hey, there's content here that you can self sign up for in the content library, but there's also content here on your learner dashboard that you need to kind of take. Um, so we kind of call that out here. And those are the important differentiations I wanted to make um, for new learners to Litmus. I think also the ability to just uh, telling them that they can earn certificates and badges and points as well um, is important. But without further ado, let's continue and keep on adding uh, this item the next item, Accord Content Lab. There you go. And these are all just high res screenshots uh, from my Mac. Uh, I recommend uh, if you're using, a lot of people do uh, instructions on like UI. So if you if you are using like a retina display that gets like really high res crisp screenshots um, in all your things, I just recommend just using the best quality image you can. I mean, that's again, pixelation, blurriness that kind of turns learners off. Um, yes. Next section, viewing coming live live sessions. Excuse me, a little spit there. And I'm just going to kind of keep on adding this text in um, and going along along. So you guys can just follow along. And a lot of rinse repeat here, right? So and and again, bo bonus points if you can keep up with Josh here, right? Like anyone behind the scenes over there that are clicking uh, and staying right with him, I know he's. We're going really fast. We yeah. have a lot to get through, but. Um, but you get the you get the hint here. Let's just step back a moment while he's he's finishing up this. I can talk to it a bit. That uh, the idea is that all that stuff's there. It's just one click. You're in. You can uh, move the the text around. You can copy stuff. You can continue to um, cr create these wonderful pieces. And we had a question about what the accordion does and looks like. Uh, we're gonna do that because we're gonna showcase obviously uh, in preview mode what this looks like in a minute. But the accordion basically shows everything like you see together, all the main headings, and then you click it. And it, and it expands to show that section, right? So not all the content is on the screen at the same time, which I think is a great instructional design practice. In fact, I, I teach people that all the time, especially in PowerPoint, when they're doing a presentation and they put all the content on the page at the same time, it's like, ah, it overwhelms people. It, it, it isn't an, a simple walk along. So with the accordion, you can kind of keep it from people from doing that because when they click the next one, it'll close the first one and just open that. So it's more of a focus tool. Is what that one does so i use that quite quite a bit too so as Absolutely. you can see josh is just cruising through pulling from the uh the downloadable uh, uh zip file that we had sent out and he's mm -hmm. just grabbing things and, and popping them in there and of course you can do this any which way that you want to um as, as to, to build out this stuff later on in practice but at least you have a, a good idea and you have some assets to work with and and to, to give it a little practice time i i did see uh I did see somebody mention, is there, uh, the text file is not in the zip file. It is. <laughs> yeah. so, so it's, uh, the text yeah, file is called I, just it it too. <laughs> <laughs> I have it up on my screen too, even though I can see it as well with, uh, I see Josh's here, but yeah, that's yeah. it. I think everything's in there, but the first, uh, Lenny logo or something, but okay. Definitely. Yeah. So and, looking and, good. Yeah, and just to, again to address any questions or anybody who missed this in the beginning, because Nathan just asked the question, he said, "How can we follow along? Is there a place we can try this out for ourselves?" Um, so yes, uh, we mentioned that you have to kind of either be an account owner or be set up as a content author in the system. And in the beginning of the session, we walked through how to kind of do that. Um, that will definitely be available in the uh, webinar recording, along with step-by-step, -step, you know, instructions on how to kind of do this on your own, uh, Nathan. If you just kind of want to follow along. Uh, Again, um, either way, uh, 
thank you guys for just kind of tuning in. So let's get on to this next item. I'm glad you stopped, Mike, because this is actually the, I'm going to insert a gallery inside of an accordion. Which oh, is man. I, uh, right? Yeah. Um, sounds crazy. So a gallery is actually a swipeable gallery. You can swipe to the right, left, so like look through the image. And this is just another great way to display content. So for adding an item to the gallery, you start by clicking that button. And we're going to start with a picture, right? Um, and in this picture, it's going to be the accordion profile settings right here. So this is just an image showing where learners can go to access their profile settings. See my little avatar right up there. And then if I click that little plus button, you see that, you guys, that little plus button right there, that adds another item within the gallery. Um, so for that, we'll do insert text. And I think I have this copy and paste. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, right? And you can see right here, you can already kind of just kind of swipe through this, right? And then- So we're these are gonna walk through processes, right? Like, hey, here's this, here's step one, here's step two, here's step three. This is a really great way to walk people through a step-by-step -step type process. Yeah, definitely. And honestly, you could do better than me right now and literally just insert uh, something that says step one above that, right? Or it, work that into your image or your content. Um, and step two right there. Yep. Cause that's, that's definitely a good thing to know. Yep. Um, within that too, we'll just add one more item, which is another picture of the back end of when you click into the learner profile so they can just kind of see a preview of that page. Um, so expanded count profile expanded. All right. There you go. Um, so we get click done editing on that one. And the last one right here, we'll just have this nice little animated GIF uh, to highlight uh, the coolness of, again, throwing GIFs into your training. Um, small animations, so simple. Um, you can pull them from websites. I'm crediting the author on this one. I'll show you guys how to add a caption. Uh, this is from Elijah Robertson. This is actually a Pokemon badge. Yeah, 8-bit, um, right? grab it. Where is Looking that? Image? Da, 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 da. And then so change image and you want to upload badge.gif. Not badge slash gif. That wouldn't work. <laughs> that is a typo. All right. Da -da. So nice oh, that's Sweet. high tech right there. Look at that thing. Right. That's something out of a Mario game that oh yeah, Pokemon game for sure. Oh, totally. Love now it. we're having fun, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're having a blast, Josh. <laughs> Loving it. Great. So we'll hit done editing here. And uh uh, last item on this page we're going to need to do is let's just add a declaration. And a declaration is a way that you can have your learners confirm that they've read through the training content um, and they've proceeded uh, uh, through everything and checked all the boxes. Um, once you click uh, enter, once you add a declaration component, you'll now enter into a declaration mode, which means this component will not be able to be progressed through until they click. I agree. Um, and I agree looks pretty lame. What do you agree to, right? So you can actually just click into this and then um, copy and paste any text here if you want to make it bold. Honestly, the, the white text on the yellow, if you saw in our theme settings, it actually, there was a little warning for accessibility and it says that the white on yellow does not meet minimum accessibility guidelines and it kind of gives you a better suggestion uh, to maybe darken this yellow or maybe choose black instead of white. So that's maybe something that I would do after I publish. So real quickly, before we go for any further, let's take a preview of see what this looks like, right? Yeah, now we're we, talking. We're in the back end. You did a lot of work. Author. I want to see I want to see this thing. Let's see right? the brilliance that is your thing. And, and I want to just recognize a couple of questions in there. Um, and remember, to export these courses, they're all going to become SCORM courses. So you can definitely play them in anything uh, once you build them in SCORM. So uh, that's, yeah, I mean, obviously the authoring tool is is stuck in here, but it, it's definitely, uh, you get SCORM courses out of it. And then uh, recognize it is a little fast uh, going through here, but we, again, it's going to be recorded. You can go back and pause and, and kind of go through it at your own pace. We wanted to make sure we at least got through building one full course out to showcase that in the hour. So recognize that. Okay, okay. Josh, what do we got here, bud? Oh yeah, so this is that intro page we talked about, right? Um, so you'll notice that this looks slightly different from the admin page, you know, it's kind of sandwiched, um, but the intro page is just a great, this great little simple way to introduce your learners to the course. Notice right here on the tabs up, up top, you can actually preview this 
in different responsive formats. I love it. Uh, right? That's my so favorite tool. I love that. Wanna, Go through on the mobile side this is what it would look like going back to the desktop version of it though um, we can kind of see what it looks like on our end so we've got this nice header text this is what the donor dashboard looks like i if now i'm doing this as a preview i don't like how that like goes to the second line so i might change this text to a full width so that doesn't happen or you know wraps a little bit better um, so these are things why you want to preview them for your learners and you can kind of see your text right here above an example. And you, as an instructional designer visually, you need to ask yourself, think, ask yourselves things like, does this text flow well with the text above? Does it stand out? What are things that we can do to make this stand out better? We're already right here, I'm seeing that this text does kind of get a little bit lost under this screenshot because the screenshot's big and bold and there's a lot of things going on. So there's things that you can do to, to change that. Maybe you just make this a button that you click that will have a pop-up that has the text, right? Which is a component that we can add in. Um, a few things you can do in Litmus. Again, I would center this text, which is something you could do. So it doesn't look janky off to the side like that, right? <laughs> For lack of better <laughs> words. Um, but these icons look good, I think. And if we click into like these little, one. yeah, right? And we click into these little um, accordions, you can see this is how the accordion functions, right? So you take a sign training, the learner reads through all this good stuff. And then we go to explore the content library. And you can see as we're clicking through, these little check boxes Great. are being added. So I'm going to lie and say that I've read through this all. And you can't get through this until you swipe all the way through. So everything that has to be viewed within that um, according for it to go through. And then once you hit confirm, I've confirmed that I've been understood. And you can kind of get to the next page. So that's what it looks like in the preview. Um, we're going to take the next portion to actually create a quick little assessment um, and and just I think that that and then a little conclusion page and that's going to pretty much wrap it up for the course building portion of this and then uh, we'll open it up to Q&A um, and just also just kind of talk about this stuff because it's fun stuff so yeah. clicking on this little plus button right here there's actually a template for quiz um, that has, yeah right it gets you started and uh, I'm just gonna change this uh, let's see now for the text headline. Okay. So actually let's just change this title to assessment. Sorry. I didn't include that in the instructions, uh, assessment and who needs a cover image. Let's just delete that. <laughs> um, we'll replace this text right here with the one in the rich text file. Uh, now for quick knowledge recap, simply answer the questions below to complete this course. And now we're gonna get going into different question types. All right, so before I do anything, uh, you can see that it starts with some multiple choice questions in this thing called qu uh, quiz results module. So in addition to the multiple choice questions, we also have true and false and click to match. Um, so that adds a little bit more flavor. And there will actually be some more, like I said before, more updates coming to this. Uh, there's going to be branching logic too, which is exciting um, to kind of guide people down a, a, a path and see how that works. I, I believe that's being worked into the assessments in addition to the content itself. Um, don't hold me to it though. <laughs> but we are, I, you can hold me to the fact that we are constantly updating this and adding new things. Cause like I said, last two, uh, last update, we added two new types of assessment questions. So for the qu first question, we're actually gonna start with a true and false. So I'm gonna hit plus right there to add a uh, component in line. I'm gonna scroll all the way down to these purple ones, which are assessments. I'm gonna click true and false. Um, so you can see this text and you can just simply copy and paste um, to replace that text in there. Everything just really, you know, you click into it and you edit it just like a Word document. It's really simple. And you can even change, you know, true. Uh, you can like say, uh, instead of true, you can write like, Definitely. Mike likes to do this in the dojo and all of his sessions. No way, dude. <laughs> Any, anything you want, really, you can customize it to make it match your brand. Right? <laughs> and one cool thing about this is I want to show you guys um, some things about the, the feedback, which was, you know, one of the things I included that makes good training content. Um, when a learner gets a question right or wrong, you have the option to give them 
either a blanket answer or specifically a correct or incorrect feedback answer. Um, so right here, we're just gonna click, click the correct incorrect and then I'll hit, you got it. And then incorrect would be try again. Sorry. And then when the learner progresses through that and gets that question wrong, they'll see, oh, yeah, try again. And you know, it's not too hard to figure out what the other question would be, the other answer would be in this true and false question. So that's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> now let's edit this existing next question, which is a multiple choice question. I'm gonna add this as a question title. Where would you go to explore all courses available to enroll in? And here are the three options, learn a dashboard, content library, and enter a new choice, messages. And then you have to click add choice to lock it in. And then you, to set the answer correct, you just simply cor uh, check the correct one. And uh, if there are multiple correct answers, you can also check, check multiple, multiple boxes. It's cool like that. Um, so I'm gonna just add some quick little feedback for uh, correct answer and incorrect answer. Uh, but obviously the correct answer here is the learner can go to the content library to see courses that they want to sell, sign up for. And the incorrect, if they got that wrong and they went to learn, they said learner dashboard or messages, this incorrect text does kind of explain like, look, you have courses uh, that are assigned to you on your learn dashboard, but the ones that you can self sign up for are in the content library. Um, so let's delete this other uh, multiple choice because we don't need to show another one of those. And we'll add in last question, which is click to match right here. And for this one, we're gonna do four columns. We'll hit add pair to add up, a, add a new column. And quick, quickly, so this is kind of a shuffle sort of like you click, you see things on the left and match them up on the right. We've seen this around um, in e-learning. I'm ha so happy that it's part of this content author piece. Um, one thing that I will say is make sure you click this shuffle both columns. Um, <laughs> otherwise it's kind of pointless. Um, and actually, it's right, of, right? Yeah. Da, 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 da. You might actually have learners be like, is this a trick? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are yeah. they trying to get me? Um, but I think, uh, you could do that when you do review mode. Um, so review mode actually just kind of displays the, the content for the learner to view. So you don't actually have to get it right. Um, to go through it. So uh, for this one though, it is in assess mode and it's part of this quiz. Um, and so we, we'll definitely click shuffle. Um, so real quickly, just add in this um, content. So uh, oh, let me just add in the title right here. So when, where in the litmus navigation would you go to find the following items? And that navigation probably should be lowercase. All right. And then I'm just gonna kind of copy these over a little roughly, if you don't mind. So, I mean, again, the, the big picture here is it, it can do a lot. And I don't know how many people on the line have gone through and had an opportunity to uh, really jump in and, and look at the at this tool or use it quite considerably. We would love to hear from you if you have. It is relatively new, I would say. Um, mm -hmm. no, not super new, but the thing that, uh, that Josh brought up is the most important is that we continue to add features to this every release right it's definitely being built out more it started out uh very simply right and now we're going to start uh, in subsequent releases putting more and more into this and building this tool out so that it is a, even more powerful than it is today but we're going to keep that simplicity so we're hoping that uh that everyone can use it how we do and anyone can can go in and build something out relatively quickly uh, i know it saves me half the time uh, than I than the other tools I used to use, and being able to get that out in twice as twice as fast to the people who need it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This is hey, Josh. You got eight minutes left. I want to yeah. let's save a few minutes at the end for uh, to answer some of these questions. Definitely. Uh, yeah. So so get on through there. Yeah. La last little bit, and that's all. Um, is the quiz results. Uh, you can set the pass rate here. So for us, we have three super easy questions. They better get all three of them right. But you know, <laughs> if they don't, we get the three chances to try again. And if you give them attempts to retry, this option will pop up, which lets them um, retry incorrect questions only, which is, uh, which is fancy. And then you can also set up, set it to, for them to either scroll to the top of the page or go to a specific page that you declare. So if they fail and you want to send them to the bad, bad, bad <laughs> learner <laughs> website, <Page>. yeah, <laughs> you just direct them right no. there. 
It's the no. Punish them. Uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I was just going to add a little conclusion page on here, but I mean, that kind of speaks for itself. It's just another little, you know, conclusion. And I have this content here, just copy and paste. And really, it's no, nothing too nothing too crazy complicated it's just a very simple conclusion page um one other thing i just wanted to show right here is if you could add a background image behind your entire section too which Ooh. really looks nice right yeah. so i'm gonna just add this checkbox bg here just to show you what that looks like and take mine it's a little busy right but i mean i played a little bit with the transparency in photoshop so it was not so in your face but it just um, yeah. adds that extra, again, the spice, a little bit of salt right there. It's made, it made yeah. it go a long way, make it look right. a little nicer than just the white. Yeah, I like that. Definitely, definitely. A little empty space right there, but you can add more yeah. stuff if you want to. And yeah, yeah that's, that's it. I mean, we have our course uh, that intros our people to litmus. And technically, if, if you follow it along, you can kind of go in here and update it to match your company branding and um also add in any messaging that you want to add in because I'm yep. sure there's special things that you want to talk to and tell your learners. Um, so yeah, let's maybe just open up to questions and a little feedback and I'm looking in the chat right now. There's a lot. There's well, a Josh, lot. first, thank you so much for that, uh, that breakneck speed through there. I know it was a lot. Hey, uh, as you can see, yeah. we only have, you got through all of that. There's six minutes left. I mean, that was a record time. But again, I know we moved through, through things pretty quickly. We did say, hey, follow along if you can. But even if you got through 30%, 40% of and you tried a couple of things, that's better than what you had before you got here, right? And now you have this video. You can go through it, um, stop and pause and whatever, or just go in and play with it. Because we really think this tool is... Um, it, it, it's simple enough that you just need to get in there and, and get your hands you know, hands dirty. And I think that would be great. So a couple of things, just want to uh, recognize Jackie. Thank you. That's awesome. Jackie says, I put together a quick and simple course um, and, and basically it replaced the PowerPoint in an hour and people loved it. So yeah, awesome. Yeah. I started to do the same thing when I was building out uh, things in this tool. I do like release notes and things in it because it just was a, a, a more unique way of, of putting it out there. I thought it was pretty great. Um, I'll take this one. Hi, Mike uh, from Muhammad. Uh, as a content developer, how do you select which feature uh, to use in which situation? Is there a rule of thumb for that? Two things. I, I want to keep it simple, and I also want to make it uh, unique and interesting and memorable, right? So those those things are in the um, the territory of just something that that's going to catch their attention, right? Or they're going to have to do something. So sometimes I don't just use stuff to just for the sake of using it right if it's if I could tell tell the story simply I might do a simple image and then uh, and then content right uh, text image text image text video break it up every now and then throw in something like a, a quick uh, hey did you get from the stuff above uh, which is which right a little little check check mark uh, you know they little there you just want to break it up with these little uh, um, attention grabber type things where they're just doing something different than than what they had been doing right Definitely. so that's an important thing as we go through there's no really rule of thumb I'd say just don't overcomplicate it like Josh was talking about early putting putting stuff inside an accordion inside of a this inside of a that it's like sometimes I mean it might make sense but uh, sometimes the accordion is a really great one if you have a, a, a long process that or you have a long you know set of content that you want not to all be on the page at once you click one section and it opens oh cool and then you click another so just be thinking about that as you go through i would just say try to stray away from using all of the stuff just for the sake of using it because then it it doesn't have that that meaningful like oh like the for instance the the slide one right the where you have the photos josh and the mm -hmm. image yeah, uh, the carousel one, right? That's really, really great for process. Like I would use that exclusively for process because it just makes so much sense as they as they walk themselves through that. So, uh, you know, a few little tips there as we go along. Oh yeah. Oh I man. Another, yeah, there's a <laughs> bunch of questions. Yeah, all of a sudden, 25 more questions came in. It's good. I know. Go. We do our best to answer and like respond to these after the sessions. It takes a couple of days, but we will get back to. I hope every single one of you, no matter yeah. what. Um, yeah. Somebody asked, is there a way to embed YouTube? Uh, no, there's no way to embed code directly into this. Um, they're very strict about what they release in here and the ability to kind of add in coding content in uh, this might throw something for a loop, but we do have videos. Um, and if you have a source of YouTube or if I know a bunch of little ways to download videos from YouTube, you can Google it. 
um, you could put those videos directly into your courses if it's allowed um, and not anybody's copyrighted material. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Uh, I'll take the next one real quick. We'll bust through some of these. Sarah, really great question. Uh, this makes courses look so much better. Is there any reason to be using the standard course builder uh, that comes in Litmus instead of the content authoring feature? The only reason that I can think is if you don't want a SCORM file, right? These produce, uh, in this content authoring one, they produce SCORM files that you can use anywhere and, and such. The other one, um, it's not SCORM, it's like baked in type stuff. And, and it, I, if you want to do that and you don't want to produce a SCORM file, then yeah, I, but again, I, you have so much more, uh, more that you can do using this tool and so much more coming as we continue to build out all of the functionality. Just to give you a little secret, right? A little secret here is that this uh, was actually a tool called Blue Jay that was built to develop a lot of the content from one of the businesses that joined us a while back. Um, and we just kind of had it sitting for a while and now we're integrating it piece by piece, small, small bits by small bits, but it can do a lot more, right? It can do a lot more. It's already been built. So we, we're, we're slowly bringing that stuff in just so you know. So it's not like we're building it. Uh, we're just starting to put things in now from a, a tool that already existed. So very excited about that. But yeah, I would just use this. I mean, SCORM's great. I think you can do pretty much everything in that. I, um, uh, yeah, I, I think you could use that if you're building out a course uh, from scratch in, if you're just doing it in Litmus and you want to add in a bunch of different stuff and uh, I, I don't know, what do you think, Josh? Is there a reason to use the other one? I would just say, I mean, well, there, there's other, definitely other modules that Litmus has to offer yeah. that are yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah. So like throw in a video assessment in there. Um, and then, you know, we do have native assessment modules in Litmus too. I think the benefit of the native assessment modules is those are directly linked to the reporting engine. And I believe that the modules within this, the assessment modules within this SCORM course aren't necessarily linked to reporting engine because we're looking at completion of this SCORM file, like this module, rather than completion of an assessment. Um, so yeah, exactly. if you do yep. want reporting on your assessments, you could do that, but if you're good with course completion, um, this works great. I, I think it's a healthy mix of both. I mean, yep. we, you could use a content author to present your main content and all that your good instructional things but there's also you know tons of times where you would want to embed like a youtube video and you'd use like just the youtube embed module and and then that in your content author you'd say go to the next module and come back and then you just kind of have to split it up a little bit like that um yeah. but there's a way to do it in litmus we have so many different ways to cut it <laughs> Well, hey, that's the time. We want to respect your time. And thank yeah. you so much for sticking around to the end. It's 11 o'clock, 11.01 now. Um, we are going to try to get to all your questions and get some answers sent out to you. Thank you so much for all your time. Uh, Josh, wonderful having you. Way to drive, way to put this uh, content together. Give you a, a, a round of applause, buddy. I appreciate it. So um, get in there, play with it, check it out. Let us know your feedback. We really look forward to it. And we look forward to continuing to build out products that serve you and make your job so much easier. With that, take care. All the best. Uh, and we'll sign off. Take care. Thank you, guys. All right. Cheers.